we're going to um, show you how to do a deep cleaning of the fountain uh, in preparation also to replace the pump. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the main box here and just shut off all the all the uh, uh, electricity here so we can be safe. So everything's off there. Then we're going to come back to the fountain and um, we're going to open it up. We're going to close off two valve so the fountain doesn't refill and unplug it and drain it par partially the way down. So let's walk on over to the fountain. So I recommend sandals for this job and old shirts because we'll be using muriatic acid in a little bit. And um, so we're going to come in here get a, you need a screwdriver and there's four screws with on these latches so you need to come and get the screwdriver turn the latches down and there's and there's two more down here you've got to kind of look for them and then just pull up and we'll just set for right now we'll set this over here now You've got um, down here, you've got two valves. You need to turn these off so because we want to drain this fountain down to make it dry to replace this pump, but you, we don't want the fountain to refill. So you've got to turn these off. both those, this one and this one, and then we're going to come around here, we're going to unscrew this cap, here, now we're going to come around here, and we're going to unscrew this. It's going to start draining the fountain. It'll drain it down to about, I don't know, 8, 10 inches. And the rest of it will have to uh, wet back out. But you have to be really careful about this when you reinsert it because you don't want to cross-thread it. And if you don't know what cross-threading means, then you should get somebody that does because if this gets cross-threaded, it's going to cause a lot of problems. Um, getting this put back in. So I'm unscrewing this. You'll, you'll see it come to start flowing out here. And it will slow down to about um, like it's an 8 or 12 inches. Okay. Stop. So these are the tools that we're going to need to clean the um, deposits off the, the uh, tile here. Um, you're going to need a, a gallon of, of um, muriatic acid. Now if you don't use it all, I suggest that you do. You don't want to store this once the bottle is open because it'll corrode everything out. The fumes will leach out once, you, once it's open. You need some kind of um, air mask, preferably one that's um, going to stop chemical fumes. You want some eye protection, a couple of brushes. You'll want some rubber gloves. I, I like these long ones because they protect that splash from the muriatic acid up your arms. Some rubber boots. You'll want a tray to pour some of the acid in. And the reason you're going to want that is because at the same time, once you've removed these screws here with your hex wrench, you see how the um, scaling is on the window. You're going to want to soak this in the muriatic acid to clean this as well. So those are the tools that you'll need. And you'll also want a short hose with a faucet handle. 
to rinse and provide water. Now, what you want to do is go in back in here and you have a faucet in here. You want to turn it, go ahead and screw it on just like you would at home on your garden faucet. You'll need to come back in here and turn these back on. Go ahead and turn this on and you're, you're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put my gear on and start uh, cleaning uh, with the muratic acid. How long do you leave them in? You leave those in until you finish scrubbing them. Um, they stay quiet. Also on this, on this baller, it gets a lot of perfume and sauce, so you can use the muratic acid to brush your sauce. And you'll notice how clear that is now.
since they've been in the uric acid. Put some more brown to your gun. Looking good. Is this before? After. In the process, a couple of the tiles came off, and you'll see it's bowed here. It needs to be re-glued, so we'll do that at another time, but just be aware of that. So we'll, we'll fix that once it's all dried out and done. Yeah. And we're going to turn the water off on the hose. And these two valves. So then because we're going to empty this this valve and then the one right behind it on the other side that one make sure it's turned all the way off so now we take the hose out and we're going to go ask either the vendor at the smoothie shop or at what is currently Cavo's if we can borrow some electricity for our wet vac this is it. So we're coming to uh, the smoothie bar and they're letting us um, borrow some electricity for the wet back. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> you see that this is drained down to a, a few inches so we need to suck out the rest of the water uh, and the leaves and derbis uh, and let it dry out before we uh, um, put the new pump in. So here we go. Okay, let's oh, see that. I'm sorry, wait a minute, wait, wait. So it's going to take several cycles of filling the shop vac and releasing the water. So we have this. So we have this set up to clean the upper bowl and check the netting around to make sure it doesn't need more ties. So we'll need something like this. I salvage to put the wet back on so because it's going to take a couple of, um, uh, of uh, five gallon buckets to clean this out but you'll need to have this raised up on some kind of platform um, this one's I guess about four feet high we have these you'll need some ladders that are approximately 12 feet on each side to be able to safely look over into the uh, bowl and clean it and so we'll just jump up there and start on it. And this is where you'll find what people have thrown in the upper bowl. Here's a, here's a chain. 
here is, uh, I'm not sure what that is. You'll find we even found bicycles thrown up on top of this. So we'll go ahead and do a little cross. So we'll go ahead and suck this down. And you'll notice there is netting here around the side. So they usually put on just to keep the debris from filling up these lion heads where the water drips out. So occasionally one of the ties, because of the sun, will break and you'll need to take some of these small ties and retie them around here. I think we're okay this time, but it's a good idea just to bring them as long as you've gone through the effort of um, coming up here and doing that. Here's a here's somebody's earring. So we've got the uh, backs full. We didn't quite make it on one trip, so we'll have to go down now and drain it, and then um, do it one more time. So after cleaning the fountain and deep cleaning it, um, it's always a good idea to paint the bollards and you need a high gloss enamel paint. I uh, usually get this at um, Benjamin Moore, any place selling Benjamin Moore products. But the other thing to do is to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy four empty uh, one quart cans. Uh, and when you buy the gallon, put the paint in these four cans. It takes about one quart to do all four bollards. Uh, I found that if you just buy the gallon and use it, by the time you use it again, the paint's dried out. So this, this will save you from having to um, go and buy a, a gallon of paint every time. Um, so four empty cans. Um, one gallon of high gloss paint. I'm trying. They're all different. Oh wait, it goes on the bottom. It's an orange, so the round part goes on the bottom. And then this one goes here. Yeah.
You're gonna have to reach in my pocket. <laughs> okay, there's something I'm gonna. Easy it is. <laughs> <laughs> So you're going to let this dry for 24 hours. 24 let the hours. Silicone dry for 24 hours. And then we'll refill it. And... So to refill it. And turn on the turn on the, va the two valves inside, and um, even if you want to fill it faster, you can turn that faucet that we had the garden hose on. And then once it gets up to a certain level, put the th turn that garden hose faucet off, and um, just put the the uh, cover back on. It has like a uh, toilet bowl type filler in it that will automatically shut it off at the proper height.